Hey, welcome to Vortex Garage, and today we're working on our 2003 town car. We're going to show you what it takes to replace the starter, and as we go through this process, we'll talk a little bit about why we're doing it. First up, we need to go ahead and disconnect the negative terminal off our battery, because we're going to be working with live cables otherwise that connect directly to the battery from the starter. So simple enough, our negative battery terminal is an 8 millimeter. We'll go ahead and remove that and get it out of the way. On these cars, this terminal tucks pretty well under this cable and it's not gonna risk coming, popping out and touching that. If you were worried about that or some cars that, that do that, you can put a little tape around here or some tape, uh, electrical tape around the terminal itself. That way, if for some reason while you're working on it, this were to pop out and touch, you wouldn't have any connection. All right, now that we've got our battery disconnected, we can go ahead and raise the car up so we can get to our starter. Now, on these town cars, they have the air suspension in the back. So we always got to say, shut off the air suspension and the switch in the trunk. You don't want to lift, hoist, or tow this vehicle with that on. And once that's done, you can go ahead and raise it up. Now, we are going to use our two-post lift because we've got it and it helps with the cameras. But the last time I did this starter, I used ramps and uh, that was enough clearance to slide underneath and take care of it. So it doesn't take much, but whatever you do, make sure that you're supporting it correctly using jack stands, properly rated ramps, a lift, etc., following the manufacturer's recommended lift points. All right, let's get to work on this. All right, so we've got our car up in the air, and as you can see, we've got, tried to get some light and cameras here so we can show you what we're doing. Let's go ahead and take this camera and just show you where the starter is. So the starter's up under the car, attaches to the back of the engine. Well, actually it attaches to the bell housing and the transmission, and you'll find it on the right hand or passenger side. So we'll come in the side here and you can see this is the oil pan. These are some transmission cooler lines. And if you look just above those, there is our starter. Nice shiny new starter that we're gonna be replacing. We'll talk about that as we go along. But here is the solenoid. These are the cables that connect to it. There are two cables that are under this protective cap, which you want to be careful not to lose. And then there are three bolts that hold it to the bell housing. And inside of there, it engages with the flex plate to start the vehicle. Now the book does call to remove this bracket here. There's a single bolt that holds it. And this gives a little bit of room to move these transmission lines around and allows you to get your tools in there to get the three bolts. So you can see one of them but there's another one up top and then one along the back side, which is a little harder to get, but we're gonna take care of them. Let's go ahead and do it. So the first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is pull off this protective cap. Pretty simple to do, just like that. And you can kind of remember where it goes. It only really goes one way. All right, so for these battery connections, looks like we got a 13, and a 10 and we're just going to use a quarter inch drive to make life easy so you're probably wondering why are we replacing what looks like a brand new starter now if you had seen on our prior video where we replaced the uh, intermediate steering shaft this starter has developed a problem and does not want to start all the time even though it's less than a year old So remember to have your battery disconnected here. And then it's as simple as removing the nuts and getting the wires off the terminals here. And then I'll just put the uh, washer and nut back on so I don't lose them even though the new starter should have them anyway. All right, so next up, the book does say to go ahead and remove this. So let's see if we can get into there. Looks like a 10 millimeter. All right, and that should just give us a little bit of extra room. This doesn't really move out of the way very much, and that's sort of what I remember when I did it last time. So I'm not sure exactly what the value of doing that is, unless you remove some of the other bracing for it as well. But all right, now it's pretty much as simple as removing the three bolts that hold the starter on. 
and finding the right combination of uh, extensions to go ahead and do that. Okay, there's one. Yep, that did it. Pull that one out. All right, and then I mentioned there's one, and you just kind of got a feel for it. It's all the way up and around. And on the uh, town car, it's not terribly difficult to get to. All right, of course, hold the starter with that last one, and there it goes, and you've pulled your starter out, which looks nice and new. All right, let's take a look at this nice, shiny starter that we just took off, and you're probably looking at it going, this looks brand new. What's up? What happened? And, uh, well, this is a brand new starter. It's made by Bosch, and um, what I'll first say is there's a lot of brand new aftermarket starters in the marketplace. Some of them extremely cheap, some of them a little more pricey or name brand like this Bosch unit. Now I thought I was being smart buying a brand new one from a name brand thinking I'd get something that was OEM quality and perhaps it is, perhaps I just got bad luck and have one with a faulty solenoid and otherwise it's fine. But what I would advise against, first of all I'm going to tell you I would get an OEM unit. Um, so I'm advising against this from my experience but again maybe I'm an outlier of the bell curve. But I would say that there's so many of these aftermarket new starters out there that are super cheap and they're so tempting. I just wouldn't do it. The quality of those units is really suspect. It might be fine for years, but you might be testing your luck with it. So I would say use those at your own risk. I know the price is often very appealing, but a lot of times the quality, you know, the, you get what you pay for kind of deal. Now, a good example of that, look at this sealing material here. It looks like they just pumped some RTV of some kind in between the uh, solenoid and the motor body. And uh, well, let's take a look at what I'm replacing it with. So I went directly to Ford, and this is a Motorcraft remanufactured. I actually used one of these on the uh, F-250. So it has the same unit. It's been operating as long as I've had this one, so about 10 or 11 months. And I think I've even put more starts and more mileage on it, and it's been flawless so far. So the thing I like about this, if you go to your Ford parts counter or you go and have this done at the dealer, this is what they're putting in your car. So this is Ford sanctioned. This is what they would recommend. It's a Motorcraft part. Now, the one thing you'll see, there is a little bit of a difference in terms of that piece here. It's kind of like a molded plastic piece. I don't know if that's Teflon or if it's actually just plastic, but you can see a little bit of build differences here. Now, what I got suckered into was the whole thought that this is remanufactured versus brand new. But you know what? I'm pretty sure the only thing that ends up staying is they check the cases and make sure this cast piece isn't cracked. I'm sure the solenoid's brand new. The motor itself internally is new. So really, it's probably just the casing. So this is what we're going to put on. And quite frankly, this is so far what I'd recommend. I mean, we'll see how this one serves us. But at least, like I said, it's what you would buy at the dealer. And the cost difference, it was only about $20 more than this unit from Bosch. So we're going to go ahead and go up under the vehicle and replace our starter. We're going to get one of the bolts started. We're going to do the hardest one first, and that'll hold it up there. All right, so we'll go ahead and come up here. And uh, hopefully you can see this on one of the cameras, but we'll go ahead and get the starter mocked up, mounted up. And then we'll go ahead and... Get one of the bolts started. And then we'll take our other two bolts and get those started as well. And we're just gonna snug them up so we can torque them.
All right, now that our starter is in and torqued, we can go ahead and get our cables mounted up. So it's pretty simple. They lay about where they go. Got that bigger one, and then you've got the smaller one that goes on. Put on a new lock washer. And a new nut. I really hope my GoPro on my head is working. Then we'll do this, new lock washer, and a new nut. Now, I would highly recommend that you torque these to specification because on those solenoids, notice they have a little bit of a plastic piece here. If you over tighten these studs, you will break that plastic very quickly. So torque spec can be your friend here. Let's go ahead and do it. All right, so our smaller one is 45 to 61 inch pounds, not pound feet, inch pounds. So we're gonna do 55 inch pounds. Kind of right in the middle. That's it, look at how little that is. All right. All right, so this bigger one is 98 to 123 inch pounds. We're gonna go to about 120 on that one. That's it. So, so far we've got our mounting bolts torqued. We have our two electrical connections torqued. So I'm really not sure why the book calls to remove this bracket since A, it doesn't seem to get in the way of anything I did, but I had removed it. So we're gonna put this back and torque it down to the book's recommendation, which is 89 inch pounds. All right, now the final piece under the car, we're gonna go ahead and replace our cover. Now that we're done, we can go ahead and reconnect our battery. All right, now it's time for a test start. All right, so our test start went awesome. Everything sounds good. Everything is torqued to spec, everything is in. So our job here is done. Now, as you can see, I am gonna walk away from this video saying that I recommend, at least for the time being, a rebuilt Motorcraft starter as opposed to some of the new alternatives that are in the marketplace. I'll certainly let you know how this one holds up. In the meantime, if you'd like to see more stuff like this, please check us out here at Vortex Garage. Drop us a like, a comment, or a subscribe. All of those things help us out. So thank you very much, and we'll be back with more repair videos and also restoration stuff like our Spitfire and our Fury. We'll talk to you soon.